Okay, um, this particular video is going to be short, <laughs> he says. <laughs> That'll be a first. No, I think I've done one short one, actually. Um, I'm just going to show some uh, new materials, basically. Well, I'm going to show three things. I'm going to show uh, a material that I'm using, which is um, a biomass material, if you like. Um, turned it, carbonised it, and uh, it's in one of these batteries. The other battery I want to show you is a, a tiny, tiny one. Uh, and the third bit will be a completely new material that I've been developing for quite a while. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about it now. I'll, um, I'll let you watch the video and um, kind of decide for yourselves. Now, the other thing is, when we're looking at this these surface areas. Um, mine did quite well, didn't it? For the size of it. Yeah, quite well. So, is my tiny surface area better than anyone else's? Have I produced or got more energy density on my surface area than anyone else? I'll answer that one when you've seen these videos. Um, I'm going to run this motor while uh, I'm talking. Um, okay, so this battery here uh, at the moment, I'm running, um, I'm, I'm using a surface area about that big, it's about two square centimetres or something like that in there. It's a new carbon uh, which I've got on test. Now I'm going to do another video on all of these carbons soon. I know I keep promising, but I'm going to do it. Um, this at the moment, the carbon that I've got in here, is uh, from biomass, which is this, I guess, um, spring onion, as we call them in England. Uh, and I've used just that bit, and the carbon that's in there is that carbonised. So that's why I'm testing this particular battery. Um, I've adapted this uh, higher charge voltage now. For a quick charge and you'll see all the reasons for that uh why, why i'm doing that uh in another video basically and all, all these materials as well all these new materials um and the way i've got them set out now which is on this stuff this kitchen cloth lovely and microporous uh done it that way for a particular reason um and it will all become apparent in another video now this particular battery, which I say has got that uh, carbon from the uh, that onion the leaf, if it, I, I guess we could call that a leaf, the leaf part of the onion. Um, it's running this motor, which is we know a 30 milliamp load at around two volts. It does vary a little bit, depends on the battery to be honest. Um, so that's that bit. Now. I've got my data logger set up here ready to go, but not for this battery, for the other battery I'm about to show you. Um, but what I'm going to do first, um, okay I'll turn that off, uh, I've lost my clock, there it is, right what I'm going to do is charge this for a short brief, now you'll notice the current there is one and a half amps, we're charging at 13.7 uh, uh, volts. Uh, and the current's dropping as it's charging, you know, all the rest of it. So that's at about 10 seconds. What I'm going to do is start the motor and start the clock at the same time. Um, this isn't for any particular reason, it's just to show you this particular carbon at this particular time, just because I, you know, I'm testing it now, really, today. Uh, it's been sat around for ages, never tested it. To be fair, it's not in the format that I need it in. Um, I did put it in the coffee grinder, and there it is. That's the carbon, but it's not. It's very, very coarse grain. I know there's a you know some nice, very fine powdery stuff there, but in the on the whole, that is a very, very coarse grain. Um, I'm just looking at buying something else. To be able to get though, I don't want to ball mill this stuff because I'm never going to produce a lot of it 
you know, to be able to go down that route, to be honest. I only ever want to produce a little bit now. Um, the only thing I do produce kind of en masse is um, sugar carbon, really. So um, that's that carbon. That's the onion carbon. And there it is running uh, that motor in this, uh, you know, very, very small footprint um, of active area in there. I should really have crossed these over so you could see. I mean, those those strips there. Um, obviously, I've got I've got another video showing these, so I won't bother to talk about those right now. Um, th this I should have just crossed it over the same as this other battery there. But anyway, um, at the moment we're on 0.78 volts. Uh, the clock's still ticking, obviously. Um, at the minute, we're on one minute. And 50. Now, for the surface area and for the load, that's not bad. What I'm going to do in future is, um, when I when I run a battery now, I'm going to charge it and run it from the motors, and we see what the current is, and I'm going to charge it again and run it on the data logger, and and just look at the two, just compare the two. Now I still haven't calibrated this yet, but that doesn't matter at the moment. I haven't had time, to be honest. So, um, okay, we're coming to a stop. Get ready to stop this. Stop that. Two minutes thirty-two. Um, you know, tiny footprint in active material. Um, Thirty milliamp load. That's not bad, actually not bad at all I knew there was something else I needed to try uh, the timers on I've just given this another run um, I'll show you this in a second so we stop that now we're on th almost three minutes there about a few seconds now all I've done there is I've put in there a piece of what I call a helper carbon all right now I know what, exactly what carbon's on there and what, what, what it involves and I've just put a piece of that in there to help it along a bit which is why I call it a helper carbon and it's gone from 2 minutes whatever the last one was 30 uh, to 3 minutes same charge same everything really uh, so you know um, now, now I've, I've said that uh, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll say this as well while we're at it. I'm going to set this up soon, uh, put that there. And what this is, is a, a voltage, current and watt meter. Uh, so it shows you the watts, um, it works that out for you. Uh, it, it even logs watt hours, which is no good to me at the moment because uh, I'm not doing long enough sort of charges or anything like that. So, you know, watt hours I'm not bothered about. But we've got voltage, current uh, and watts. And basically, I, I'm, I'm going to set that up uh, for charging. Now, now I'm charging at these higher voltages. These things only work from six volts up. So if you try and put uh, four volts into it, it doesn't work. But like I say, now I'm charging at these um, higher voltages. Um, I'll just knock that. Obviously, uh, I can use that. So we'll see how much input we've, we're putting into this thing to charge it uh, for how much we're getting out um, so you know that's it I might do that today actually I've got another one of these power supplies to put in as well so do away with the other two that's up the top there on the top of the bench um, there was a third carbon I was going to try in there but I'll, tr I'll, I'll do that later okay um, there it is. Now I'm going to move the camera to show you this because it is quite small. Again, two pieces of carbon crisscrossed, just using that small. You, well, you can, you can see um, the surface area that's on this one because that's it. You know, that is a piece of one of the carbons, uh, active materials that's that's in that battery. So that's the battery in its entirety. Okay, um, I'll show you more on this particular one later on, but for now, what I want to do, if I can get a clamp on that, that is, 
I just need to basically um, get a piece of this stuff on this titanium so I can clamp all manner of stuff onto it you know I've got my data logging leads there there's my data logger set up which shouldn't be moving because I thought I'd taped it down but uh, obviously it needs a bit more tape Right, that's a bit more secure as I was saying these are the data logging leads um, I'm not going to connect the two leads at the moment I'll leave those to one side uh, so this little battery um, first thing I'm going to do is check to see if there's anything in it no there isn't because it won't run the motor so I will charge it for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm thinking that's pretty dry actually. So I'm just going to give it a run. Now you should notice that I've put the same load on that, which is. Uh, Okay, let's reset. Um, the 30 milliamp motor at 2 volts, of course. Um, so I'll, I'll run that out. I'm thinking this is a little bit dry at the minute, but I don't know for certain. Okay, so that's that. But look at this. Um, Let's have a look at the current. Yeah. Okay. We'll charge it at uh, 16 and a half volts. Now that was going up rapidly there, so it's probably a little bit high. Seven hundred and twenty milliamps going into that then. So what I'm going to do. start the motor and start the timer. Now don't forget <laughs> that that's still that 30 milliamp motor and that is the size of the active surface area on the battery. On the well it can't be any bigger can it? <laughs> The only thing that's concerning me, I, I, I do wish I'd have changed it. I've got that old uh, yellow separator, kitchen cloth stuff, and I, I wanted to try this stuff. I'll, I'll do that in a bit. Now, I don't know what you're expecting from this particular battery. Um, And from that surface area but I can say that at the moment we're on 0.6 uh, and we, we've gone over the minute so that's not doing too bad really Okay, so we'll stop. One minute, thirty seconds. That tiny little battery, thirty milliamps. Not bad. Um, I guess that because it's such a short time span, we could do that again. Reset that. But first things first. Look at the recovery as well. Now I know that does, does go up to over 2 volts because I was testing this one earlier on. I'm not going to wait for that now but what I'll do is see what this current is. It's 
it's about 10 seconds I think 15 and a half volts uh, do that again keep forgetting to do this bit but we could add 4 seconds on or not even bother um, now obviously if I run one of these other motors let's say a 20 milliamp load that goes for ages and ages and ages uh, I won't bore you with that one now but I'll, you know, we'll, we'll look at that in another video I think we might need a little tiny drop of electrolyte on there. Okay, that was only 1 minute 12, so um, I think we definitely need some electrolyte on there. Yeah, my thoughts are that it just wanted to drop more electrolyte on it, so keep forgetting to do that one. And there you go, 1 minute 46, look. I did up the voltage a little bit as well on that one, admittedly, but uh, um, turn that off. Again, we've got superb recovery. Now, I don't know if that has still got any energy to run a lesser motor. Obviously it has. That's 14 milliamps. So again, as with the other carbon battery, the, the larger one, uh, that you've probably already seen on YouTube now, that was there with that size of material um, about, yeah about that sort of a size I suppose um, the, the same thing happened where it was still able to to run a lesser motor look so I'm not going to run a 20 milliamp load off this with a smaller motor at the moment because it's just pointless uh, I just wanted to really show you that small battery which I've done
Okay, this battery, before I finish up, what I'm going to do, same load, 30 milliamps, that particular motor there. Uh, I'm going to reset that and start that. Um, obviously the surface area is what you see there. Again, um, there's something new in there that I've been working on. And um, it's looking quite promising. And I'll, uh, I'll just let this run for now and then I'll show you what it's all about. I just hope it's not going to let me down because it actually looks a bit dry at the moment but Okay, I think that is about to stop, so there's our time at the moment, and stopped, 1 minute 45, um, it is a bit dry, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to we'll start that again, we'll run the motor, ah, timer, always forget something, start the timer, Probably need to add a few seconds on that, but it doesn't really matter. Not at this stage. I mean, I've, I've just had um, two minutes and twenty seconds, I think, out of that. So you know, that's the surface area, roughly. I'll show you that in a minute, anyway. But um, it's just something I'm working on. Um, It'll all become apparent in a minute. The one of uh, many things that I'm working on at the moment. Now it's a shame because this motor stops at uh, 0.47 which is almost half a volt but I've got other motors that will stop at 0.3 and stuff like that but I'm just going to run with this now I'm not uh, oh well it's going on a bit longer okay no worries 0.41 normally 0.47 so this time round it's doing a bit ah that's interesting okay we'll stop that and we've just got two minutes out of that. So there's the battery and like I said um, I'll show you the surface area of this this particular material that I'm just testing now. It's a bit rough and ready but there it is. I wasn't using all of it it was just up to about there Okay, so that's about two, two and a half square centimetres, something like that. Well, two and a half centimetres by two and a half centimetres. 
I never know how to work that one out. Um, so there's the material. Now, I've been working on this material for quite some time now, and there it is. It's a rubber, as you can see. Nice and stretchy, nice and bendy. Okay, it is rubber, as you can see. Now, why would I be doing that? Well, I've been looking at I've been looking at flexible, um, flexible material, shall we say, for quite some time. Um, a flexible material that I can use in a battery to make the battery flexible. Um, the whole idea is hopefully that that will not only be the active material but also the anode or the cathode. That whole thing is, or two pieces of that, one anode, one cathode will be the battery. Now that piece I've just taken off as you can see there there it is flexible rubber okay stretchy flexible rubber it's not perfect still working on it quite tough flexible rubber okay so there you have it now you've seen it and to boot there it is in my battery that's where I got it from that's where it's going now that's, that's a bit dry oops left the motors on again keep doing that uh, we're at 13.4 volts, so I'll, I'll leave that. So that's about 10 seconds, okay? Um, I won't bother with the timer, no point. There's the voltage, started at about 1.7 volts. I like it, it's dry, you saw it was dry, so. Uh, that's no good. But the other thing is, um, that rubber is microporous. Not only is it soft, flexible rubber that works in a battery, but it's microporous too. Well, it, I guess it would have to be, wouldn't it? To an extent. I mean, basically what I'm saying is, um, any of these materials in binders, uh, we need the electrolyte to soak through, don't we? That's what we need. And that's what I've got there. Because you can see it working, and I've just shown you the material. I've just shown you what it is. It's a soft, flexible, rubber, carbonised, obviously. Um, and there it is working in my battery. And there you go. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that bit. I know I did. Um, I'm just giving this one, one last run. Um, because I wanted to uh, just put a tiny amount of electrolyte on there. It was quite dry. Um, it's it's just a new formulation tonight, that's all. Um, it's early days, but uh, hopefully um, something may come of it. It may not.
it's um it's quite amazing stuff really I mean you can tear it you know but it takes it does take some tearing you know it's almost elastic band that you know Okay, all stop. Two minutes twenty one. So, I guess we can say that uh, it kind of works. So, once again. You've seen the material, that's it. Um, that's uh, a thicker block of it that went wrong when I was mixing it. Okay, as you can see, it is rubber. And once again, I will take this apart. There it is. There's nothing else there by the separator. That is the separator there. And there it is. My flexible rubber cathode material. It's a bit flimsy at the moment until I get the formulation right but there you go so I'll keep testing and I'll um, see you all later okay hope you enjoyed that um, three new items there um, going to be doing more videos obviously uh, in the coming week or so um, so that question then uh, surface area um, let's take uh, and I've, I've done I've got some video on this as well um, pretty soon uh, a recent video from Robert Murray Smith paper battery where he painted his ink onto a, a piece of paper and he got a big old surface area that he cut out and he made a paper battery and it does work because obviously I've tried and tested that method you know big surface area not sure what the surface area was it looked like about a hundred mil millimeters by let's say 10 centimeters by 150 to me which is quite a big area but he ran his motor for um, two minutes, I think. Uh, I think it was a 200 milliamp initial start load on that big surface area. So, my little surface area there, in comparison, is about that big. Right? As a, a general comparison. So, is mine better then? 
did I do better? I mean, I used a 30 milliamp load on a really small surface area. So if we equate it up, did I do any better? Uh, let me think about that for a second or two. Mm, not really, and I'll tell you why. My formulation uh, for my carbons, uh, my active materials, is completely different to the way everyone else seems to be going. Uh, established batteries, let's take a, a lithium battery, lithium ion battery, jelly roll battery. If you unroll it, it's miles and miles of nice thin surface area uh, where all the energy is stored. For me, I'm sort of still torn in my head uh, as to which is the best. Which is the best way to formulate your surface area? I mean if you look at um, a zinc carbon battery, um, modern zinc carbon battery, uh, with zinc chloride and you take uh, the carbon out of that battery more often than not it's just a compacted mass a solid compacted mass and it works okay the non rechargeable you know um, we know that but I'm talking in general terms now um, so this is the kind of the route which I've decided to take uh, with my active materials. So that, as you see that, um, RMS's surface area was very, very thin. Very thin. So, hence the reason for a larger area. Mine, albeit smaller and more compact, if you took my small compact surface area, Compact is the wrong word. No, it's, the, it's one of the, the correct terms, but um, basically what I'm trying to say is mine is thicker. So, whereas mine would be between half and three quarters of a millimetre thick, uh, that painted on ink surface area is going to be wafer thin in comparison. And I have, I can't remember if I've shown this on video, um, I've, I've done a similar thing with this kitchen material where I've painted on, in fact, there's a piece there, look. I've actually painted on ink style, in a binder, obviously, my active materials, and there it is, on that kitchen cloth. Okay, tried and tested, works, but you need a fairly big area to get your energy density. So, um, this, this piece here, if let's say you flatten that, or if, or if let's say you melted it, dissolved it, and painted it on, what you'd end up with basically is an area like that. So the two kind of equate in that respect. But what I'm trying to do is keep it compact uh, as compact as I can, but still work. And it works, it's doing the job. Uh, so that's my personal route. Uh, I don't want to go down, uh, where is it? Let's take another piece. You know, I, I don't want to go down that route particularly. Um, I want to go down the route I'm going down. And I will continue to go down that route because it, you know, the damn things work. So that's all there is to it. And I've got other things in mind for it. You see, um, it's all my. This this is very microporous. This cloth, and and this whole thing is very very microporous. So I've got, like I say, other stuff in mind. Aluminium air battery for one. Um, now that uh, that rubbery thing there that you saw, that flexible rubber. Uh, which works as a battery, as you saw. Uh, I don't quite know uh, what I've got in mind for that yet. I've just got no idea at this moment, apart from a flexible battery, hopefully, where uh, that material would be the anode and would be the cathode, 
uh, and would be the active material all in one, sort of a composite uh, anode and cathode if you like. So that's what I've got in mind for that. Uh, whether it will be successful, who knows, but I'm giving it a go. Um, it's just an idea that I had a while back uh, and so I've been working on it um, you know, with 30 other things which I shouldn't really be doing, I should be concentrating now. Well actually I am going to be concentrating now because uh, it's time for chemistry um, as in electrolyte um, and there's a, lot, a long way to go there so <coughs> to, to get what I want to get at the end of the day um, you know I've got several electrolytes that work in that carbon battery uh, several formulations but I haven't yet sat down and done the maths properly um, and balanced all the reactions out properly as you should um, so you know like balancing out electrons and things like that half reactions and all sorts of stuff and I'm still learning to be honest I'm, I've got a long way to go yet I'm not a chemist I'm just uh, an average bloke um, trying to learn and I am learning you know I can actually write out write out equations now so uh, yeah redox reactions and all sorts of things like that uh, I'm starting to learn how to write these formulas down uh, with all the chemical numbers and um, all sorts of stuff like that, you know. So, yeah, that's it really for now. Um, I've got a lot more to say. I'll speak to you soon.